What's going on guys, hope you're doing awesome and welcome back for another PyTorch video. Uh, so I'm guessing most of you already know what TorchX is about, so, so most of you probably searched and uh, clicked on the video, but for those of you who don't know, I better explain what it is. So for NLP tasks, there's a lot of pre-processing needed when dealing with text data, and TorchX is a powerful library that can solve a lot of these pre-processing uh, that we need to do. Uh, so one generic question is what kind of pre-processing do we want a library to be able to do for us? And uh, so here we have a generic list uh, and we can see that uh, Tortex checks a lot of these things like file loading, tokenizing, creating the vocabulary, batching. And the two that it wouldn't handle is uh, splitting the data and the embedding lookup, which I'm going to show uh, probably not in this video, um, but another one. And, and in this video, we'll just focus on the functionality of Torch text. But here's a, a quick overview of what we want. So we have a text. Let's say the quick fox jumped over a lazy dog. And we would first want to tokenize this. So it would become a list of uh, the quick fox, etc. And uh, then we would want to create a vocabulary and we would want to map each word into an index. And then when we have the vocabulary, we would want to take this example again and we would want to numericalize it so that we get a vector of just the the vocabulary indexes for each word and sort of the final last step would be to an do an embedding lookup uh, so for each word there would be a d dimension uh, embedding vector that represents this word and these could also be pre-trained embeddings like like glove vectors so that's sort of the overview um, i think we're ready to go into the code now so let's first start with the imports so we're gonna do actually let's do let's do sort of the steps we're gonna do uh, so that we are clear on that uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to specify how the pre-processing should be done okay and this is gonna be done with fields the next step would be we want to use a data set uh, to load the data and uh, this would be done, and I guess this would also do the numericalizing, which we which we looked at, and this would be a tabular data set in Torch Text, and this would handle a couple of different data set uh, data set files. So it would handle JSON, CSV, TSV files, which is we're going to show all of those in this video. And then the last step, we want to construct an iterator to do uh, batching and and padding so this would be done with the bucket iterator all right so these three are what, what, is, what we're going to use and so we can import them we can do from torch text dot data import field uh, tabular data set and and also bucket iterator so before we continue, I feel it's important to also show you how the data should be structured. So here I have some train and test data, and uh, it would also work if you would have validation data uh, if in another file. But here we have sort of all the formats. We have a CSV file, we have a JSON file, and we have a TSV file. And uh, uh, let's say we open this JSON file. And uh, so what I have here is just some very uh, simple toy data. Uh, we just have three examples. and the idea is that we have some quote and we want to uh, say oh, sort of how motivational is this quote. So we would have Jocko uh, who said, you must own everything in, in your world. There is no one else to blame. And we rate this a score of one because this is highly motivational. And then we would have some, some something else like a random potato said, stand tall and rise like a potato. And this is score zero. And so sort of when you have data, you could have some that aren't really relevant for the data, like this in this case, the name wouldn't be relevant, but this right here, the quote and the score, those are the relevant ones. And so this is how it would look like if it's a JSON file, you would have a dictionary for each uh, row uh, in the in the JSON file. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so that's how it should be structured if it's a JSON file. If we have a CSV file, uh, sort of what you expect, just the, the name, quote, and score, and you would have sort of under those columns. And uh, same for same for the TSV file, except now it's separated by tabs. Now that we have the the necessary 
functions that we're going to use let's start with doing the tokenize so this could be done in several different ways you probably wouldn't want to do it in this way but it's just a simple way and i'll show you how to do it better uh, later on in the video so we want to do just a tokenize lambda x x dot split so it's just going to split it with where there's a space and then we want to do let's say quote and we're going to uh, call the field and we're going to say sequential equals true because the data is sequential um, and then we're going to use vocabulary is, is true and we're going to use tokenize equals tokenize so the function that we define and then lower equals true and this is going to make everything lowercase so here we specify sort of how the data should be pre-processed right that's the first step it's going to be in lowercase and we're going to use this tokenizer then we have the score it's also going to be a field but sequential is is equal to false and use vocabulary is false since this is this is a I guess this is an example of sentiment analysis, but the, the things we go through really are generic so that this, for example, could be true if it would be a translation data set or something like that. And then we would construct a field to be a dictionary. And here we're going to specify which columns to use in the data set, uh, in the data set rather. So we would want to use quote and this would be so remember we had a name but it wasn't really relevant so if we don't mention name here it's just going to ignore it uh, so we're going to use quote and we're going to use score those are the two that we feel are important and what we can do here is we can do uh we can do uh, just q and then a uh, quote and this quote here is going to be for this field so this specifies how this column should be pre-processed using this field and then the score here we're going to do s and then score and what this q is for right here is that later on when we create the batches it's going to be so how we get the the quote is going to be batch dot q and to get the score we would do batch dot s so sort of uh i guess making this more compact I guess we, we could also use the same quote and score, but just to show that you could change it. And then so after that, we want to do the data set. So we want to do uh, tabular data set. Uh, and we're going to use dot splits. And so here we're going to do path equals uh, my data. That's sort of the folder that I have the data in. And then we're going to do train equals train dot JSON and test equals test.json format is json and fields is fields and then what this would do is it would return a tuple of the train data and test data so like that and yeah so this is how it differs if you would want to use the uh, for csv you would essentially just copy this and you would just change this to that csv 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 and if you would want it for um for the tsv it's sort of the same just change csv to tsv and also one thing i want to add here is that you could also do now we don't have a validation set but if you would have you can also do like this validation equals validation dot json for example um so yeah this is how you would let's comment these but th this is how you would use it for for a json csv and tsv let's just use the, the json file and uh, so we could do is we could do pr print train data and just a single example and we could do a dot uh, dict of keys and dot values and this would give us uh, the I think the quote and the scores let's see torch tag is not a package oh man so that error took a very long time to find um, the problem was that 
when having uh, the when I created the file, uh, I named it Torch Text, which was a very very bad name since the package is also called Torch Text. So it of course uh, caused caused a problem. So I just changed it to uh, something else. And uh, yeah, if we now continue and we run this, uh, we can see that we get the the keys right here, Q and S for the quote and the score and we also get the quote right here and the score of that quote. So uh, that's a good start. What we want to do now is let me just uh, remove that. And what we want to do now is we want to build a vocabulary and we're going to build it for, for the quote, um, quote field. Um, and we're going to do build vocabulary on the training data. And we could also do something like max size of the vocabulary. Let's say we would have a maximum of, I don't know, 10,000. Of course, uh, in this case, we just have like 50 words in total, but just for illustration. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so let's, we could also do something like uh, minimum frequency to be two, which would only include words that are has a frequency of at least two in our data set, but we, we can set it to one in, the, in our case. And yeah, so what we want to do now, the next step of our of our steps right here is we want to construct an iterator to do the batching and the padding. So we're going to do train iterator comma test iterator is equal to bucket iterator dot splits. And we're going to do a tuple train data comma test data. Uh, batch size equals let's say two and then device is going to be CUDA So this is just going to split our training data and test data into iterators uh, so nothing nothing uh, Difficult here, I guess uh, what it's gonna what it's gonna do as well is it's gonna do the padding for us uh, Which we're gonna see soon so we can do for the uh, for batch in train iterator we can do print batch dot let's say q and we can do let's just do run that and we'll see right here that we have sort of uh, a batch here with two examples and then the last batch which is one example since we just have three in total and uh, one thing to notice here is that they are all of equal length in this batch and the ones here stand for the pad token um, so that's what it does for us, right? That's the power of torch text. It's gonna do some of these uh, padding, etc., for us. Uh, and we could also do print batch dot q uh, batch dot s rather, and this would also include the uh, score for each quote. And uh, so let's now try to see. So this is sort of a good uh, step for us, right? We, this is what we want. Uh, we can do a few minor improvements on this, uh, which I'm going to show now. So we're going to do import uh, spacey and then we're going to do, let's see. So our goal right now is to remove this tokenize. This, as I said in the beginning, this is a bad tokenizer and uh, we want to have a better one. So what we're going to do is we're going to import spacey uh, and you can get that from pip install spacey and then one more thing we're going to do is we're going to do spacey comma n for english we're going to load the english vocab uh, vo vocabulary tabs and you can get this from from this right here and then we want to define tokenize of some text and we want to return an array of toke.txt for toke in spacey and the tokenizer of that text and then we can just remove this old one so this is going to make some improvements this is a better tokenizer and uh, the, especially for other languages than english this is going to be a better uh, better one so you would for example if you have other language you would load that vocabulary as well and uh, let's see there's also one more thing i want to do and you can also have uh, pre-trained word embeddings using torch text. So you can do, let's see, you can do vectors right here in the build vocabulary. Uh, and we're going to do glove.6b.100d. So this is a pre-trained glove vectors trained on 
a data set of 6 billion words, I think, and it's in 100 dimensions. And I think, so if before you run this, this is going to be like one gigabyte of size. So just be careful before you run this if uh, it's going to take a little bit of time if you have a slow internet connection. You would actually need to do one more thing for this. You would need to uh, transfer those weights onto the embedding of which is defined in the network. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial, but I'm going to have code for it on my GitHub. Uh, it's literally just two lines you have to add after you've created the model, but then we would have to sort of create the network and all of that. And I don't really feel that's the point of this video, but it's on GitHub if you want to check that out. So for this video, we covered how to use Torch Text to do the pre-processing if we have a custom data set. In the next video, I'll show the built-in data sets that Torch Text has to offer and how we can load them. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.